does uh, rightly they will misinterpret the scriptures. Where was Paul writing this from? Where was Paul writing this letter or these things that we are reading? Let's start with a geographical place uh, or uh, in that uh, sense. Where was Paul writing this? Mama Chongo, I want to say something. Where was Paul writing this? I think it was in Rome, in prison. Yeah, the answers come from uh, here. He was in prison in Rome. And again, we can connect this when we read other scriptures. He was in prison when he wrote uh, most of the letters in the New Testament. He was writing them from prison in Rome and was writing uh, to Timothy. Where was Timothy? Timothy was planting churches that, or going around to the churches that Paul had planted uh, in different uh, places and began to write uh, to them different letters. And one of the letters we are considering today is the letter of Timothy. So he wrote to him and he was writing uh, from prison. So it's very easy to find the geographical uh, or place where he was writing these things from. And also, if we are to look at time scale, when, can you give me the other one, please? When, uh, if we look at when, again, we can find this book. Is it after Jesus had gone back to heaven? Is it before Jesus? after Jesus had gone back to heaven. So we can place uh, timing after Jesus Christ when we come to the New Testament. When we go into the Old Testament, we can easily place the books. For example, when we talk of uh, uh, Genesis, uh, if we are looking at uh, uh, Genesis, we can uh, uh, place it uh, way back beyond 2,000 uh, years. Uh, thank you very much. We can place Genesis happening somewhere here. The flood and everything. When we talk over Abraham, Joseph, and uh, the family of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, if we are talking about the Old Testament and Genesis, we are talking of this uh, time here. Meaning from Jesus, you go back about 2,000 years, you find Abraham. From Abraham to Genesis, many, many more years uh, uh, to that place. If you are talking of them coming out of, uh, uh, like maybe the book of Exodus, we'll be talking of about 2,000, uh, 1,500 years back from Jesus to there. But now we are talking about after Jesus Christ had gone back to heaven, and now we are moving this side towards ourselves. We have lived about 2,000 plus years. Uh, we are somewhere here. Uh, from Jesus. So if we are talking of Paul uh, writing to Timothy, maybe we are talking of maybe within a hundred years, 40, 50, 60 years uh, between that period when Jesus went back to heaven and then uh, Paul uh, writes to Timothy somewhere here. Where are we ourselves? We are almost somewhere here. 2,000 years from Jesus Christ. When we go into the Old Testament, the books of the prophets and everything, again, you are going back way that side. So we find that, thank you very much, Paul is writing to Timothy, so it's very easy to find the time. When uh, is he writing these? He's writing these things uh, after Jesus Christ, and uh, that is uh, 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 many 40, 50, 60 years, uh, or within 100 years thereabout, uh, because they did not start writing or compiling these books uh, maybe after 40, 60, 100 years and then they began to put the pieces together. So you find that uh, the books of the Bible, we can easily find when, the time, the period and the generation. So Paul is writing to Timothy slightly. Uh, people that have heard about Jesus Christ, the one whom they crucified, and everything. So it was still fresh in their minds. So you find that for us to understand, we are living about 2,000 years far from them. 
And now talk of uh, language development and everything and the cultures and everything. So you begin to think, oh, if I have to understand them, then I'm going 2,000 years to the time of Jesus Christ. And how many things have changed in between? Many things have changed by the time we are living. So to understand them, principle number three is to understand the culture and the history that the book was written in. Because we are 2,000 away from the time of Jesus. So a number of things have happened. Their culture is totally different. When we were in Israel, uh, we were looking at a number of things. Uh, one of the things that uh, I came uh, across is uh, in the scriptures, uh, Matthew chapter number 4. Let's take that example on the history and culture. Matthew chapter number sorry, 19, verse 24. Matthew chapter 19, verse 24. So the third principle is understanding the culture and history of the people that the letters for the books were written to. Matthew chapter 19, verse 24. If you found it, please, uh, if you have found it, uh, please read for us. Matthew 19, verse 24. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle, needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Now Jesus is, is speaking in that scripture to the audience of his time to say it is very easy for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. If I ask Somebody who is living 2,000 from the time Jesus spoke these things. The only thing that comes into your mind is the meeting needle. It is so small. But we are living 2,000 years apart from their history. When we were in Israel, uh, the tour guide showed us what Jesus meant. The city of Jerusalem was surrounded by fortified walls and they are big gates and these big gates for security reasons every evening they would shut the main gate and then leave a small opening that you could not go in standing you have to crawl on your knees to get in and then he says it's very easy for a camel to go through than the rich people to enter the kingdom of God. So you find that in their context and culture, the people understood what Jesus meant because they knew the small door, they used to call it the eye of a needle. And if you had come with luggage and everything, you had to leave them outside and then go in. And then they could search you inside because you have nothing with you. Everything is there outside. You've left them outside. But if you came during the day, you go through the gate. And now Jesus was comparing that entrance uh, to an eye of a needle. So you find that culture in which these things were happening and spoken is totally different from ours. So how do we understand those things? Also, like Galilee, which in the Bible language you find it is called the Sea of Galilee. But in geography today, they will not tell you that it's a sea. They will say it's a lake. But in those days, that was the largest thing they could look at the waters and say, wow, this is a sea. So you find that we need to understand the times that people were living in and their culture. We have questions people asking to say, should women cover their heads when they are in church? Again, that is culture and the history of the Jews. Women were encouraged to cover their heads. But today, we cannot impose it on believers to say, you need to cover your head. Why? We are living in a different culture. Are we changing scripture? The answer is no. So you find that there are things that we must understand with that background to say, what was meant? Uh, by their culture and history by that time when they were living in. There is a scripture in the Bible 
where God tells the children of Israel, Thou shalt not consult the mediums or the witch doctors. Do you know when and why that came in? King Saul was on the border with the Philistines. And when he didn't know what to do, he crossed the border and went and consulted a witch doctor among the Philistines to say, what is God saying? And the wrath of God was rekindled and he spoke to his people, never should you go and consult the witch doctors. Why? Because if you need to hear God, you don't need a witch doctor who doesn't believe in God to tell you what you're supposed to do. So you find that people misinterpret scripture. Other scriptures that have been misinterpreted because people don't understand the history and the culture. For example, people that uh, do horoscopes. You know those magazines say, when were you born? And people will tell you that the position of the moon and the stars and the sun determines your character and everything. And they quote the scripture uh, where the star stood where Jesus was born in Bethlehem. But the miss construed that scripture, the star did not determine the position where Jesus was. The birth of Jesus, the baby Jesus, determined where the star stood because he was there. So it's not the star which mother was born when I was born for me to say, okay, because I was born in November, what is there for November? And then you go by those things. So people take scripture, and if you are not very careful, scripture can give you anything that you want it to say. But we must interpret scripture in the light of uh, culture and history. The time when it was spoken, you ask it the right question, who is speaking, why is he speaking, when and where? Let's move on to Nehemiah chapter number 8. Nehemiah chapter number 8. So to understand scripture, we need to understand the context and the text that we are reading. Nehemiah chapter number 8. I know I'm rushing through these uh, because uh, it's, it's a big subject of which we might take many months and years. And I pray to God that one day I'll be able to put these pieces together and just find, say, maybe a Saturday where we just read the scriptures without anybody interpreting and just read the scriptures book by book. And I believe that uh, uh, God will give us the grace. Nehemiah chapter number 8. Nehemiah chapter number 8. I know the times that people might think, no, I don't need to interpret scripture. I'm not a preacher. I don't need uh, to interpret scripture. But I can tell you that uh, all of us, we interpret scripture in one another. The child will come and ask you, Mommy, what does this mean? What are they saying here? And then you begin to explain. So it depends uh, how we look at uh, Bible interpretation. A friend at the place of work will ask you, I read something like this, what does it mean? You begin to tell them, you are interpreting scripture. So it should not be that you stand in front and explain to people what the scripture says. Nehemiah chapter number 8. Again, the other principle that we need to look at is the principle of text and context. Text and context as we look at Nehemiah 8. What is text? Text simply means the passage that you are reading. That is the text. And what is context? Context is the spirit behind what is being said in that scripture. If you don't understand the spirit behind what is being said, you are bound to get a wrong interpretation. Let me give you a minor example. If I picked up a phone, let me demonstrate this. Imagine I'm phoning Brother George Shangala. Okay, let me speak to him and uh, let me demonstrate and then I'll ask him. So pay attention to what I'm going to say and then you answer 
what uh, the questions that are going to answer thereafter. Okay? Imagine I'm uh, speaking to you. Yes, Brother Chandra, how are you? Fine. Did you buy what you wanted to do? All right. What color was it? Blue. Blue? Okay. That's good. Is it petrol or diesel? Petrol. All right. Okay. I can imagine it should be that big. In Catholic bedroom. Okay. All right. That's bad. Okay. What do you think uh, I was asking, Brother Chandra? Yeah. You can't tell there are so many things. There are so many things you talked about. Yeah. You talked about the petrol, you talked uh -huh. about the colors. Uh -huh. Again, you talk, at the end, you talked about information. Huh? You were asking for information. Yeah. For information. And where to find it and all those. Yeah. And then at the end, you said, is it in class of bedroom? Uh -huh. So, you find that there are a number of times that you get the information and you can make out anything out of it if you don't understand what was Pastor Ankole communicating with Brother Changala. And once you begin to understand what was it that they were discussing and why was it, if you just speak petrol, those who drive, you might think it might be a car. But how can a car be in Kathy's bedroom? So that is disqualified. Okay, blue. Anything, any color, can it be a shirt? Definitely no. How can a shirt be connected to petrol? So you find that with the scriptures, if you don't ask it the right question and eliminate certain uh, uh, things, you get a wrong answer. So let's go to Nehemiah chapter number 8. The scripture that I want us to see there in Nehemiah uh, is verse 10. But for us to get to verse 10, let's go to start from verse 1. The Bible says, When the seventh month came and the Israelites had settled in the towns, all the people assembled as one man in the square. So again, the question is going to be running through our minds. Who is speaking? Of course, I mentioned there Nehemiah because he's the writer of the book. Who is he speaking to? Definitely should be the Jews, the people of Israel. All the people assembled, if we ask when, in the seventh month. All the people assembled as one man in the square. Again, where they is assembled in the square? Before the water gets. If you go into the history of Israel and the mapping of the, uh, the sea 